Do you think that you'll give your guys a lesson on the history of, of this series? Uh, just, to, just to give them some, some knowledge of that? You know, around Nebraska, you don't have to tell people much because everybody hears everything. So um, I'm sure the guys will be hearing about it. Uh, we'll probably talk about it a little bit. This is a special rivalry. Um, but I, I'm sure the guys will be inundated with this with it this week. Do you have a favorite Nebraska-Oklahoma game as a kid? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I remember coming to a bunch of them, driving from O'Neill or being here in Lincoln or driving from McCook to come see the games and um, going to the games when I was a little boy around Thanksgiving was a special deal. So I've seen a lot of them, been a part of a lot of them. After the game, you talked about that sort of pace running game, you wanted it to take off a little bit more. You kind of watched the film back. How much of it's, you know, the trenches stuff and how much of it's the running backs, a combination? What, what's your yeah, view? It's a combination. I, I just think we got to be a, a little more consistent. It's one guy here or there on some plays. It's missing a hole on another play. Um, and they and they had the box packed, so it made it a little tough, but we still need to be able to um, pop, pop a few more of those. and. Uh, it's got to be a collective effort, um, tight ends, running backs, offensive line, receivers. Did you like what uh, Gabe showed in uh, the second half, kind of popping off some runs? Yeah, the yeah. thing I liked the best is he looked like he was running with a little bit of attitude, like uh, like he was going to make it happen, he was going to find a hole and get us yards. And uh, we need an aggressive attitude, in, including in the running back room. You're talking about the offensive line and the group that has it, some of them play together, but how much of it is about getting those guys really on the same page? And then how do you walk the line of, you know, maybe working somebody else in or thinking about that when it's a group that needs it? Also? No, we got to grow as a unit, and that unit might be five guys, it might be seven guys, it might be eight guys. Um, we're going to put the best guys out there. If we need to rotate, we'll rotate. Um, more than anything, I think they need to stop thinking as much as they're thinking and, and just come off the rock and, and move people. But again, it wasn't all the offensive line. We missed a few cuts. Uh, tight ends missed a couple times. We had would have had some bigger runs and receivers missed a couple times. So uh, it's a it's a group uh, deal and um, was good enough to win Saturday, but we got to keep getting better. Has Teddy Brodsky worked his way into a conversation of playing more? Yeah, Teddy's, uh, Teddy's in the conversation. Um, he's improving every day and he's got a, a big upside. So. Uh, we'll see how quickly we feel like he's ready to uh, go in and contribute. What did you think of just the way he came in, his attitude, not only in high school, but once he got here, of, of just the way he played? Yeah, I couldn't believe how big he got, how fast he got uh, big when he got here. Um, really athletic for his size. Uh, he's learning. Um, hopefully he comes around sooner rather than later. How do you manage the four game then with him? Do you, do you just kind of take it one game at a time, then after four you have to kind of make a decision? Yeah, um, with some guys, you know, we're going to hold the four games. Other guys, uh, we're going to play them as we need them and make a decision as we get closer to the four games. The receiver tight end depth was getting tested Saturday. Do you feel like some of those guys could pop back in this week? Or? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, we were down a bunch of, uh, bunch of guys, honestly, a bunch of our best players on Saturday. You looked up in the third quarter and Oliver and Omar and Austin and – Xavier and Travis and none of those guys were playing and thought the guys that came in uh, did a really good job, played hard, uh, but those are some of our most talented skill guys and we need them back. So uh, I know they're working hard to get back on the field. Could you, could you say what the deal was with, with Austin? Was that a head situation? Yeah, he landed his head a little bit on the turf and got a little dizzy and um, hopefully he recovers quick. Generally speaking, by what point in the week do you kind of want to know who Adrian's going to be throwing to, or do you take that all the way up till kickoff? I mean, you want to know on Monday, um, but sometimes you don't have that luxury. We want guys to have practiced if we're going to play them. And uh, there's some unique circumstances where you have veterans that have been there, done that. And if you get them back at the end, that's probably good enough. But guys need to, to train uh, in order to perform well. And um, we want them back as soon as possible. Well, Preston will live in a little here. I know, but any of, are any of those guys ruled out? No. Scott, uh, kind of going back to managing red shirts and so forth, when, when you're making the decision when, when the guy's approaching four games about whether to keep going or to stop, uh, how much, how do you manage that as far as, how much do you talk to the player about that? How much input is his, how much input does he get into that decision? Yeah, if the decision's easy, uh, there isn't much of a conversation. If the decision's a little harder, um, we involve the the player and, and sometimes the player's family too to decide what they want to do if we get to that point. But most kids want to play, and if they're going to get significant time, uh, they want to play. 
Uh, if it's going to be a play here or there, it, it's probably not smart to to use up the year. How much of a difference can can Travis make for you when he does get back in the run game? Because he's got a reputation for being a good good blocker. Yeah, we, we get spoiled with guys like Austin and, and Travis, and um, I thought that again those guys that that played battled. Chris has been playing a little bit hurt too, um, and then we're playing. Uh, you know, Borkerture and, and Chancellor Brewington that just moved the position. So uh, I can't say enough about the job that those guys did, but we're looking forward to having our guys back too. How challenging is it, Scott, at receiver, if you have to look at or if you're going to look at some younger guys who haven't necessarily been running your stuff in practice to then say, you know, come up and, and, and give us some depth, add some depth. We might need you this week. Is that a, is that a transition those guys can make in one week if needed? Yeah, I mean, that. that Experience helps, and so uh, any we've already been playing some young guys to play more young guys. Uh, you're just gonna be playing more guys without experience, but uh, if we get to the point where we have to bring somebody up, we will. I think there's several guys that are ready, and uh, we'll see how the health and depth work out this week. I know you have to sometimes tread lightly with the officiating stuff, but on the offensive PI stuff, the the two calls, is there anything that can be done differently, or is it no? Um, I don't think the one Saturday we could do anything different, now. Scott, what went into the decision to, I guess, take, put your defense on the field first instead of the offense against Buffalo? Uh, I trust the defense. Um, you know, we talk about trying to score at the end of the first half and getting the ball back in the second half. And um, I think uh, the wind was blowing. We can kick it through the end zone. And we wanted to put the defense out there and have the possession in the second half. And, um, that probably won't always be that way, but the first couple of weeks we felt like that was the right decision. What are your early impressions on Oklahoma, specifically their quarterback? Um, it's a talented team. While wow, you turn it on and uh, the speed just pops out right away, uh, every position, uh, the size and speed of the guys. Um, so really encouraging our guys to, to execute the same way we, we have been and improve that, but try to do it as absolute fast as possible because I, I know the speed of Oklahoma um, – is going to be a little different than what we've seen the last couple of weeks. And Rattler, you know, what makes him so special? Yeah, he can make every throw. Uh, really nifty. They do a great job coaching their quarterbacks, and they got some super talented ones. And uh, he's surrounded by really good O line and a lot of uh, weapons on the perimeter and backfield. So um, it's a formidable opponent for sure. Did you know much about Grinch before he? He went there, and, and what do you make of what they've they've done on defense over the last couple of years? Yeah, no, you know they're tough to to figure out. Um, he does a good job mixing things up, uh, disguising things. Can't always tell what coverage they're in. Uh, their line moves and stunts a lot. Um, it kind of creates chaos on defense is the best way I can say it. I, I've known Alex for quite a while. Good guy, good coach. Is there personnel? Does it look like anything you see in the Big Ten? I mean, athletically, I'm sure Ohio State comes to mind. But beyond that, anything you see in OU that's similar? Yeah, I mean, they, they've got about as good a player as there is in the country at almost every position. Um, but I, you know, I don't want our guys to, to back down to that, and I don't think they will. Our guys are really excited to play. Uh, we know what kind of challenge there is in front of us. Uh, we know what kind of team we're playing. It's a great team. Um, our guys are excited about the opportunity. How have you seen Adrian handle moments like this where maybe he makes the play or there's he presses too much? How do you walk that line between knowing you got to do something but not doing the wrong? Thing? I haven't seen him press really the last couple of weeks. Um, in fact, the more we can take off his plate, the better. Um, I think that there's a couple times when he could, probably could have chose to keep the ball, but you know, it's tough to make that decision when you just ran for 76 yards. Um, he he's made some unbelievable plays for us the last two weeks uh, and really lifted the team. Um, so we need to keep uh, playing well around him and expect the same type of play out of him. Have you seen kind of a growth in his? Um you know, the way that he approaches the game, the way he thinks about it, the maturity. <coughs> Absolutely. See uh, improvement in the way he's leading, uh, growth in the way he's playing, decisions he's making. Um, he's, he's being really good with the ball right now, making sure he's not putting the ball in bad positions or uh, risking turning it over. So uh, if he can create the type of plays he creates and not make those bad plays, uh, we've got a heck of a player on our hands. Now, for you growing up watching these games and whether in person or on TV, now you're on the sidelines, you're going to be coaching in it. What's that uh, like to circle back? Yeah, uh, this was my favorite game of the year growing up my entire life, um, just like every Nebraska fan, I think. And I was lucky enough to play in two of them. Uh, one of them was Coach Osborne's 250th uh, victory. Um, 
one of the best rivalries in sports. It, uh, it's kind of a shame it went away, uh, but it, it's going to be special to be a part of it in a different role. Does it feel weird to say this would be an SEC Big Ten matchup in a couple of years from now? Yeah, I, I don't want to get into all that. <laughs> do, you, do you have to tell your guys, like, this is just another week, or does it feel different? Does this week feel different? We're going to prepare like it's any other week. That's what we do. Um, but I think the, the emotion is going to take care of itself. I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, motivational speaking that's going to need to be done. Um, these guys know how good a team we're getting ready to play, and, and they're going to be on, in the spotlight nationally. So uh, I think the guys are excited. And you know we've gotten a lot better over the last two weeks. We need to keep that going and, and keep improving on the things that we haven't done well enough. Special teams take on even more added significance when you play an opponent like this? Absolutely. Um, you know, turnovers and special teams, if you're going to beat a team that's uh, really talented, you got to you got to probably win those. Um, make a big play on special teams, get a turnover here and there. Um, we'll see if we're up to the challenge.